I'm here in Medjugorje and I'm in Hotel Grace and I'm with, what's your name? Sister Gabriel. And your name? Sister Guadalupe. And your name? Sister Joy. And your name? Mary Jo. Unbelievable. <laughs> Full of the spirit in front of me. I'm blown away. <laughs> <laughs> and you say first time in Medjugorje? Yes. First time for all of us, yes. And it's the first day, no? First mm -hmm. full day. For, and mm -hmm. how is the first impression of being here? It has been so peaceful. That's what I've yeah. experienced. Yeah. I've enjoyed seeing all of the different pilgrims mm -hmm. yeah. from everywhere and you, they're all different ages and they're all different like walks of life. And so it's really beautiful to see them all come here yeah. together. Mm -hmm. and you, where did you go the, on the first day? Apparition, Apparition Hill. Hill. Yeah. Yes. And how was Apparition Hill? Let's go to her over here. Yeah. <laughs> how was it was it? beautiful. A lot Definitely. of sun I see in your face. A lot of sun. <laughs> 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 uh -huh. Yes, and it was beautiful. I, I thought it's not what I was expecting, mm -hmm. but um, it was very beautiful. It was beautiful to see all the different people, yeah. um, different age group, different countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like the reverence and the silence that was there. Silence was there. Yeah. For you, mm -hmm. for you, Apparition Hill, what was your experience there? Going up in front of the statue of a lady? I think I had just been hearing so much about it from our reading and from our research that we had done before, but also uh, our, so our, our guide who is, is from around here and she's talked about her experience. And so it was wonderful to actually see it. And I was amazed at how many older pilgrims mm -hmm. were uh, who are climbing up it. One was barefoot mm -hmm. and just their faith and just, just yeah, just yeah. coming for Mary, coming for the peace and and just to think of seeing the rocks that all the pilgrims have walked, you can visually see how worn down they are from the millions of people that have come and hiked the hill as well. Oh, they get smoother now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do. Mm -hmm. They say here all these rocks are hardened hearts who are left behind on the mountain. Mm -hmm. That's what the saying. Yeah. And wow. for you, the mountain over there, full of the spirit. <laughs> I, I didn't know there was a crucifix up there. And mm -hmm. I was like, I love that crucifix. I want to try and find like a small replica or something. It was beautiful. And just that, yeah, where I was sitting, I could see Our Lady and I could see Jesus and it just, yeah, whenever I looked at her, I just felt like she, you know, kind of points right there and that's that's, that's the it. whole point. That's so. for our friends, Protestant friends, she, mm -hmm. she points to she Jesus. points the way. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And for you again now. On the <laughs> <laughs> You're shining. Um, yeah. I think I was also like, not like mesmerized, but like seeing how the rocks were shiny from all the pilgrims going up a bit and seeing all the older people go, it just made me think, okay, I could do this. Cause definitely like it was a lot harder than I thought how steep. rocky it was. Mm -hmm. Um, it, but also it also made me see of like, like it is a miracle that the visionaries like ran up there because it was so hard to get up. And then once we were up there, like how peaceful it was like um, by that statue. Like there were so many people up there, but I felt like we were all like in our own conversations in our own world with Mary, which was really beautiful. That's how it is though. It's like yeah. a bubble and you yeah. to communicate. Mm -hmm. no? yes. Yeah, for and sure. And now I'm curious, you look all so beautiful. How did you end up becoming Catholic nuns? What's the reason? <laughs> Can you explain your journey a little bit? And what the beauty is of <laughs> yeah. your journey. Our stories are also different. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, so, so <laughs> okay, um, so I grew up in Lincoln, Nebraska, in the United States, and growing up, um, I had a really good like Catholic family, and praying was very important to us, mm -hmm. and they just really showed me like how Jesus should be the most important thing in your life. Yeah. I mean, growing up in Lincoln, too, we had priests and sisters um, like everywhere, so just seeing them as real people mm -hmm. and getting to like know them as friends and family, right. yeah. and their joy is something I always wanted, um, and so... Um, sorry, I'm trying to see like how I cut this down. <laughs> this is beautiful. You know, yeah. that's what I want to, as another question, ask. I mean, you must have had an experience with Jesus to, to become a nun. Yes. What is that experience? I think... If not, you wouldn't do this, but you're not. Yeah, <laughs> just like growing up, my teacher just kept telling me how like Jesus like should be your best friend mm -hmm. and I just like I just made that like reality of like telling him everything and making him my best friend and just like talking to him like my best friend but is he reacting people want to know of course you okay I can make somebody best friend but it can be a delusion yeah is, is yes. he talking to you or yeah you feel it in your heart yeah it's just that pe the peace in my heart is what really like took over of like I just knew that I went to college for a year and then just like every time I went in adoration I just knew that after four years this would be over mm -hmm. um, and just like I just always knew there was something more and that peace is what I was like running after and that love that was like enveloping like my whole life. And you had, you know, Jesus calls it um, the rebirth in the spirit. You had a special encounter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell me about oh, the, the rainbow. Tell me about the rainbow. What happened? Oh, okay. Um, so one of the things is I, 
our sisters run a summer camp mm -hmm. um, and so the best night there is our skit night that we do with the girls um, and so the sisters also do a skit and it's the best skit of the night and so when they came out they sang somewhere over the rainbow it's the wizard of oz movie and when they sang that i just the room was full of screaming little girls but i felt like it was just me and the sisters there like just me and them and the i've never felt that piece before in my life um, and then so I just I just remembered that piece and then a year later I went to a Catholic conference um, and this sister I was going to this talk and she said stop following the yellow brick road and follow the narrow road to his heart and in this Wizard of Oz movie it was like following this yellow this like this is how you get to the wizard's house yeah <laughs> it's to follow, Emerald City. yeah Emerald City is to follow this yellow brick road and so just hearing that like I need to stop doing what the world's telling me to do but like follow like what truly matters is this narrow road so just remembering that piece. Um, but, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. And for you, how is it for you? What was your journey? <clears throat> um, I grew up in a very Catholic community, and so, yeah, priests and sisters were very normal. Our sis one of our sisters was my school librarian growing up. Um, but I would say it took much longer for the faith to be in me versus just around me. Um, and so in college, I was very easily distracted by the, the glitter. Book. Yeah, the glitter of everything. Um, but it, it all left me very unsatisfied and very torn, I mean torn in half basically is how it felt. And I went to World Youth Day in Poland um, in 2016 and I, I encountered Jesus in the Eucharist and he made it very clear that he loves me and there's nothing I can do to change that. Um, and I, it was an encounter like I'd never had with him before. Can and you describe that for somebody who Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so I, when I came to that, it was a huge adoration. I, all the English speaking um, pilgrims there were together, it, like hundred thousands of people for sure. Um, and my plan was to go for the music, listen to the talk, and leave before adoration. Because at that point in my life, I wasn't really in a good spot with Jesus. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wasn't really, yeah. Uh -huh. um, but they, they fooled me. We started with the music and then Jesus came out and then the talk, so I was trapped. <laughs> um, and, and I just felt the weight of all of my sin and all the lies um, that I believed about myself at that moment. And I just felt like I couldn't even look up. It was just heavy on me. Same with me. And I just felt like a nudge. It, it wasn't like a voice, but just like a nudge to like look up, you know? And I just couldn't do it, but I felt it again. And so I did, I looked up and Jesus was there the monstrance was in the shape of a cross and the Eucharist was right in the middle. And the song that was playing at the time was Good, Good Father. And so it, it says, I'm, I'm, you're a good, good father, that's who you are, and I'm loved by you, that's who I am. And I just knew that that was right to my heart, that he was speaking, like that, that he is good and that I am loved. And then I, it's like I heard in my heart and there's nothing you can do about it, <laughs> you know? And, and I just wept, like all that weight was off and I just couldn't forget that. My life didn't change immediately, but he he's patient. <laughs> so, you know, over the next like seven years, <laughs> he did a lot. And uh, yeah, after finding so much freedom um, and joy in following him more closely and closely each day and knowing the sisters, um, it, it was just, that's exactly where I wanted to be. I was like begging him to let me be a Marian sister. And, and then he said yes. So... So I'm here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your face is shining. All of you. And for you, your journey. Uh, my journey starts out a little differently. I did not grow up Catholic. I was baptized and confirmed and joined the church in 2015. Why did you come into the church? I. And where were you before? I was. I was agnostic. I. Yeah, I would say I didn't believe in God. I wasn't super. Yeah, I, I, I was proud of the fact that I was a good person and didn't need, I would say, I didn't need a 2,000-year-old book to tell me how to live my life. That was my phrase that I used. And I don't have any one particular moment. All I can say is that God, over the course of many years and through many influential people in my life, he softened my heart and weaseled his way in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, I was... It was, it was as though I, I had lived my life to the full and I had done all these amazing things and I had a very happy childhood and I didn't know that I needed more. I, I felt fulfilled and I didn't know that I needed more until I was shown what the more was. 
and and the (laughs) (laughs) I can't even put my finger on it but I know that uh, I started going to mass with some friends Mm -hmm. and I was always going for them I was accompanying them and I was just standing there awkwardly and uh, there was one one mass where I was left alone and they Mm -hmm. they left and I was there by myself and I didn't know why I stayed but I did and at that point I knew I stayed because I wanted to stay and I knew that there was something more and it took me a while to find that okay this is Jesus and he is a person and he loves me for me and yes so that that was my journey to the Catholic Church it was a slow process Um, and then two years after my there's another one of our sisters just walking by in the window (laughs) 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 and so that was uh, that was about three years from the first time I went to a Catholic Mass to when I entered the church at the Easter Vigil and then uh, two years after that is when I felt the call to religious life and it was very much I can pinpoint the day, I can pinpoint the hour that I was in my car, I was driving to a Bible study, Mm -hmm. and I just felt on my heart that God said, at some point, you're going to tell your family you'll be a religious sister. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I had met, I had met one sister Mm -hmm. before, but I had no idea what it meant. Um, But I knew that it would, I just kind of, I started sobbing in the car as one does uh, when, when there's a profound moment of grace. And I... I knew that it would be a way that I could share my faith with my family because I was living my faith. I was fully involved. I was trying to get more involved, but my family was still living at home and away 20 hours away on the other side of the country and not a part of, not a part of my faith. And so that brought me a lot of joy to know that this was going to be a way to share with my family. Um, And it, and it didn't leave that that moment of grace. I, I carried it around with me, mm-hmm. uh, and and it wouldn't leave. And so I knew I had to do something about it. And I reached out to the sisters, and then I reached out to a priest. I, having not been Catholic, I didn't know if this was a normal phase that every girl went through. And the priest assured me that it is not normal, <laughs> and <laughs> that, it's not normal. It's that, normal. that it is it must be normal. That, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not uh-huh. like it, it is grace it is a gift from God and uh, it, is like it, it it very much was something that he gave to me and he asked of me and I couldn't say no how would we, how would you subs- uh, subscribe subscribe to my <laughs> channel <by the> <laughs> um, how would you explain so maybe somebody's listening mm-hmm. right now and she's discerning to become a nun yes how would she know that that's the vocation what would you tell her my first piece of advice is don't get caught up on the yes or no. Mm-hmm. Don't allow your prayer life to be boiled down to, yes. am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to do this? Like It's all about just learning how to love Jesus more and learning how to let him love you mm-hmm. and allowing him to love you in those ways. Um, Beautiful. And you, your turn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we want to know. <laughs> um, so I grew up in a great Catholic family. Um, <laughs> I went to Sunday Mass, all the things, um, went to Catholic school. The first time I really felt um, the Lord like speaking on my heart, uh, specifically with the vocation of religious life, I knew our sisters growing up a little bit. Um, and when I was a senior in high school, a priest in his homily just kept repeating the words, God has a plan for you, and it's awesome. Yeah. Come on, come on. You're coming. You're next. You're next. Come on. Come on. So he just kept shouting, God has a plan for you, and it's awesome. And every time he said those words uh, in my heart, like mm-hmm. I started dreaming um, of uh, being a religious sister, of what that would look like. Before I had only dreamed of, like, yeah, my family, what it was going to look like, um, all the kids that I was going to put in my minivan, and all the things. Um, and then that's a big change. Yeah, it is a big change. Um, Did you have a regret? N- no. <laughs> but, well, I didn't say yes right away, for mm-hmm. sure. It took me a while. Um, but I went off to college, and I continued um, to, in my heart, always feel this call um, to go deeper, um, but never being able to say yes. And there were, like, three big fears that kind of, like, overwhelmed me of why I 
I couldn't say yes um, to this plan that he had for me. Um, one big fear was leaving my family. My family had had a lot of loss in their life, and I just felt like if I if I left, it would hurt my parents too much, and I didn't want to do that. And I also had a fear of not being a mom, not getting to be a mom. Um, yeah, and that's a big decision too. And then the third fear that I didn't feel that I was good enough. I had seen many religious sisters, and I didn't think that I could do what they did. I didn't think I was holy enough. I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think I was beautiful enough. I didn't think all the enoughs. I didn't think I was. <laughs> um, <laughs> they let me in. So <laughs> yeah, but um, and so I had a very honest prayer, um, and I wrote down. Uh, Jesus, I am a dumb little sheep, and if you want me to do this, you're going to have to break my legs and carry me. Um, and he very much carried me. So I, I got very sick for a while, um, and I, it was a way of like just uniting my suffering to the cross. And in that time, there was a lot of silence um, and a lot of deeper prayer and having to trust and surrender everything to him. Um, yeah, and so through that, I was able to learn how to trust and surrender to his will. Um, and yeah, I'm healthy now, which is beautiful. Yeah, and uh, so I've learned a lot through that. And it, it helped me just like conquer that fear um, that like he wouldn't take care of me because I just know that he, he will care for me even in this life that I don't think I'm good enough for many times. Um, but he does show me consistently that I am enough and that he wants me and he's chosen me. Um, and so yeah, it's been beautiful so far. I'm the freshest, so I've only been in the convent for about nine months, but. And yeah. there's a new one! <laughs> <laughs> My name is Sister Benedicta. Yeah. <laughs> We're telling how Sorry. you became a nun. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Short. 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 Okay, yeah. so yeah, short. my name is Sister Benedicta, and I am from, I grew up in a small town named called Runnels near Des Moines, Iowa. And that's really like, I don't know, I always include that in my story and I feel like sometimes people think it's not super important, but I loved where I lived. Um, I loved the town and I loved the community and I really saw myself living there for the rest of my life. Um, and so growing up, my family was Catholic. We always went to mass. We prayed together, uh, like during Advent and Lent. But um, the idea of having a personal relationship with Jesus or praying on my own every day was not something that that I was familiar with. Yeah, I was like very, very foreign to me. And so we went to mass and we went to religious education and everything and I liked um, Jesus, I liked being Catholic, but I didn't really, I didn't really know the, the point. And so when I was getting ready to be confirmed, I kind of started asking the big question, like if at confirmation you're supposed to be an adult in your faith, then like, what is this? Like, is it worth it? If, if Jesus is supposed to be everything, is is he worth it? Um, and so for a, for a year, I really, like, as I was preparing for confirmation, I was really seeking out a lot of answers and really asking big of Jesus of a lot of things. Um, and for my confirmation prep, we had to go to adoration. And that's really the first time that I remember going to adoration. And I remember looking at the monstrance and thinking, Jesus has to be more than I think he is um, because two things really struck me. The monstrance was so beautiful and that people that I knew and people and they were busy and they had lives, they came and they took time out of their life to uh, to spend time with Jesus. And that was really inspiring to me. Um, that was really inspiring to me. And so over the next months, I started to pray. I said, okay, Jesus, like if you are real, what does it mean to be your friend? And what does it mean to have a relationship with you? And so I started praying every day and reading the Bible and asking Jesus, like, what is your plan for my life? Because you read Genesis and everyone's like, you know, it's like God has a plan. So I was like, okay, what is it? And, um, and that is when I started to really desire to give my life to Jesus, but I had never met a religious sister. So I was like, okay, I will work for the church. I, and that's how I will serve Jesus forever. I'll live in Des Moines, which I love, and, and this will be great. And then I, I met sisters for the first time when I was a junior in high school, and I remember seeing them and being like instantly, like, I was like, they are cool, and I like them, but I was like, I am, people do not enter the convent. That is not like something people do. So I was like, okay, so they're sisters, and that's fun, and that's cool, and this is what I'm going to do. And then I went to college. Um, I went to Benedictine, and while I was there, I was studying theology. But it was really there where Jesus showed me that it doesn't matter how much I know about him, but what matters is if I know him in my heart. 
And, um, and so I was working with this program called Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. And I was at that point, I was really becoming like, I was like, okay, Jesus, I think you want me to discern religious life, but I was really scared. Um, I was really scared. Does Jesus know me? Does he care about me? Does he care about my hopes and dreams? And will I be unhappy? Um, I found a lot of my identity in what I did and what I was going to do in the future. And I, we were reading the parable of the lost sheep, and I said, you know, how does how does a good shepherd feel when he finds a sheep? And the child said, he is so happy, and he says, will you come with me? And that was just a moment where my heart realized that there was a lot of freedom in following Jesus, that he invites us to say yes to him. And so that allowed me to like say, okay, Jesus, where are you inviting me to follow you? And where are you asking me to say yes to you? And which ultimately led me to religious life and to the Marian sisters. So. How is it for you, like, like practical? You, you wear the veil, veil? Yeah, we, yep, so we wear a veil and a habit. Well, why the All veil? The, Can you explain to people why that? Why the veil? Why the veil? Yeah. yeah, so the veil, we wear a veil. Um, when you think of veils, you think of brides. Mm -hmm. And so wearing a veil every day to show that we are a bride of Christ. So beautiful, yeah. same for you. Was it a big change? It's pretty different. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you when you first get it, it's 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 different having it on your head and you kind of feel like someone's always pulling on pulling on your head a little bit, but it only took like a week or two to you get used to it. Yeah, yeah, you totally get used to it and Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. So I'm a novice. I will profess my first vows on August 13th. So it's coming up. Uh, well, yeah, it's yeah. coming up. But uh -huh. yes, I'm a novice. No? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, Jesus is really good at that. <laughs> It's really, it's beautiful to wear the veil because then anywhere we go, people recognize us as sisters. And so since we've given our lives to Jesus to be that, that witness and I don't know, then people come up to us and they ask yeah. us for prayers or like they tell us, like they trust us with information about their life. Yeah. Yeah. Or want their pictures or hugs or so. And there's another mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sister Kateri. I was just up in my room waiting for Sister Gabriel and I thought this has been a while so I came down to investigate. Um, what would you like to know? What is your journey? Why, why are you sitting here in a habit? Because God's grace is amazing. Um, from when I was very little, anytime I saw a sister I always thought that they were great and I remember distinctly putting my nightgown on my head to wear it like a veil and I have two older sisters who are close in age with me and neither of them did that so I was like oh well I just I guess I like to play dress up more than they do but over the years every time I met a sister uh, my heart just came alive and till they started talking about prayer and I was like whoa, whoa, whoa I don't pray I can't do the thing that they're talking about and when I was in high school I got involved with um, some things about just destructive behaviors and going down a not pretty path. And some friends invited me to prayer and confession and it took a lot of prodding on their part. I was resistant, but over time there was this change within my heart and there was a lot of big moments along the way, but each of those big moments even took time to really settle in and to take the impact that they needed to. Um, one of them was when Mother Teresa was being canonized. I went to a Catholic high school and they had the presentation on her in the auditorium talking about this new ministry they're starting to feed the homeless downtown. And I didn't want to because I worked a few jobs and I didn't have time for it. And there's this voice inside that said, you're called to be like her. I was like, fine, I'll go feed the homeless. And the voice said, no, you're called to be like her. And I was like, like a nun? And the voice said, yes. And I was terrified. Not only because like my job schedule to go feed the homeless, which I never end up doing that, um, <laughs> at least in that context, I did up elsewhere. Um, but I was also terrified because I'd been dating a guy for a while and I was like, whoa, we have all of our hopes and dreams and plans planned out and this isn't going to allow that to happen. So over time, uh, my good friends, they continue to encourage me with prayer and I just really found a lot of joy and I didn't understand it but I knew that there was something special so I continued praying and going to retreats um, and the first retreat I went on was because I met a sister at a gym after praying God give me a sign and well seeing a sister at a gym exercising definitely did that 
Um, and then that following year, I went to Benedictine College where I met the sisters who are in my community. And as I continued at that college throughout the year, my prayer life turned in more from Jesus just being a person to Jesus being my best friend, to Jesus being someone who I wanted to share everything with and not just share with him, but to give him my entire heart. And being around the sisters, uh, the Marian sisters in my community, I discovered that the way that they lived, that way of love and that prayer was exactly what I was made for. So without too much hesitation, I dropped out of college at, after the end of the year and entered that fall. Mm -hmm. Wow, speechless, what can you say? <laughs> because you left a lot of things behind. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know here in Medjugorje, what I learned, very important, these times we ha all have to learn to surrender. Mm -hmm. How would you explain somebody, how can somebody surrender his life? Can be as a lay person, priest. Yeah. How is the process, how do you do that to surrender your life? Surrender is... The divine will, living in the divine to live in the divine, it's not easy thinking about the practicals of it because it's scary to think I'm giving up these things that I love, but also we look beyond these things on earth to what is heavenly. And when we do that, there is a joy that comes with it. And oftentimes that joy is difficult to find because like I, when I was leaving college, my friends, they were so close to me and it was very hard to leave them but the joy of saying yes to Jesus allowed me to see that the trials would be he would take care of them and he would also take care of me and so it's when that joy is strong even if the feelings aren't following the joy there is a great surrender there and to look at him more than we look at what is being surrendered because he will take care of all of it and for you can you explain a bit surrender surrender um <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think for me um surrendering or just like giving giving it all to him um and so you can't give away what you don't have and so if i don't have a relationship with the lord like i wouldn't be able to surrender it's it's my personal relationship with him that gives trust. me confidence and trust um and with that trust i'm able to give him everything um yeah beautiful and for you one of the things that struck me a lot since entering the convent is that jesus he lets us allow he allows us to learn what we are holding on to because I think sometimes we don't even know what needs to be surrendered we don't know that we're grasping so tightly onto it and then he allows us that insight to know that we can let go of it and we can give that to him and so there's been multiple times since entering the convent that I've said Jesus I feel like I've given you everything and I've learned that there's something yeah. more there's always more with God um, but there's always another door Mm -hmm. to walk through, to surrender more to him, to give more of your heart to him. Um, and you don't know that at first because I think it's a little overwhelming at first, but just little by little, he allows you to give him everything. We have this teddy bear in the arm and we don't want to let it go. Correct. So <laughs> Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, 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 no. no. And for you? Yeah. Um, I think some of the deepest and most beautiful moments of surrender for me have come when I finally admit that I can't do it. <laughs> um, that I I can struggle all I want and, you know, I keep saying, you know, I want to surrender or I do surrender and I'll like open it and then close it, you know, kind of like, here you go, never mind. Um, but when I finally admit that I can't do it, that's when like his grace can fill me up to do it like he so he he surrenders in me because i can't do it <laughs> yeah, um we have to understand this is the, pro the, the process of mm -hmm. we come to that end in our life we don't know what to do that's god saying give that's yeah trust. yes that's been huge it's like knowing my poverty and just how how poor i am but that that's exactly where jesus has the most room to fill um and the most yeah the most to work with be when i am willing to to say like i can't do it um, and he, because he'll never leave me there. Just authentic. You know, yeah, yeah. He So he really does the surrendering, and I just try to let him. <laughs> yeah, just, just try to, you know, <laughs> yeah, admit admit that I need him, which is, I mean, what he wants. He wants to be a savior. That's who he is. Yeah, that's 
that's what I learned as well, you know. Where is the savior and where you need to be saved? The Germans want to be perfect. Yeah, <laughs> nope, that's right. Yeah, nobody's perfect. No, no. I'm close to you, where are you from? Mm -hmm. And for you? Um. <coughs> Surrender, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Surrender, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, no, I think so. Recently, I've just Jesus has been asking me to surrender a lot, like in my relationships and in really close relationships. And um, there are times when every part of me wants to hold on and say, like, Jesus, I can fix this and I can make it better and I can do it. And and when it's right, then when I think it's fixed, then I'll bring it to you. And um, just realizing that, like that that is not what he wants and that is not what he desires but he desires to um like in those moments when i feel the most like i can fix this and i can do this and like when it is perfect and then i'll bring it to you that he wants to come and fill that and to be the one um that like you know when i am like when we are sad and when we are frustrated and when we are mad to, to like to be the one that we go to and to like to share those feelings with him so that way he can he can fill our hearts and and help those that like it, yeah I don't know in particular like I in my relationships that he can like help them and like that I entrust these people to him and that he will take care of them and in turn then he he like shows his love to me um, and his gentleness and for you okay <laughs> what would you tell Jesus? that surrendering is really difficult <laughs> But I, yeah yes but i think especially like for us as religious like if we don't surrender then like what is the point you know of like yeah. that is like the whole point of our lives um and we're on this two-week marian pilgrimage so we went to fatima lords and now we're in medjugorje as our last stop Lovely. yeah yes wow. yes yeah. <laughs> um yes yeah um and but like one of the things that mary like just praying with mary and jesus of like what do you want me to do during these two weeks and the first thing she said was to surrender because i just keep learning that like i'm so good at telling god like what, what i want do. yeah exactly <laughs> of like we're here to do god's will but like i want god to do my will <laughs> um and so just like having to trust him and i think like each place we go to i keep being reminded that like i am his daughter and to like be childlike again and just to remember of like when did i lose my innocence like i just always need to be a child forever and let mary and jesus like love me and take care of me you know so just yeah yeah yep and your experience if you compare now lord fatima you can't compare i don't you can't compare that's just they're all so different yeah. Um, what is the beauty of the place? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so they they all, um, I mean, I had no idea what to expect when we came, so that, but, but they all have been really, really different, and just like a little bit of personally, I feel like each one has just like opened my heart and prepared me a little more for what the next place has to offer, mm -hmm. and so we're really, we're really at the very beginning of our, Medi of our Medjugorje experience, um, yeah. yeah, so we just came, but just seeing the, like, the innocence of all the people that Mary appeared to and their openness and their docility. Um, and so just in myself, awakening this desire to return to that innocence and allow Mary and Jesus to care for me. And like just seeing that so prominently in all three places. I think that's the message we all have to get back yeah. Yes. Yes. No, our <laughs> one of our guides commented like how you know you fly into an airport and you have to drive all of these places yeah. you have to drive you know for at least an hour and sometimes more from your airport to get you know that Mary kind of came out of the way um, to yeah to show her presence and show her love to the world and I just. I think it's beautiful to see that similarity, but that like that she's willing, that she's willing to go out of her way to show me that she is present and she loves me and she's my mother, you know, and to yeah to to bring me to Jesus, that she's willing to do that um, wherever it's at, you know. And so that's kind of been yes, yeah, yes. Um, and so yeah, it is beautiful to like go to these places, you know. But we'll have to go home eventually. But I I know that she she's more than willing to go out of her way to bring me to her son um yeah and so that's and something you? from all yeah, of them so beautiful and you fatima Lourdes. all of these things especially the just the the little children that she has appeared to mm -hmm. and their 
their willingness to trust and just to do what she says and yes and to surrender everything uh but also what you said about or maybe not what you said but something you said uh, reminded me that there's just been so many languages Mm -hmm. and so many different people and so many walks of life Mm -hmm. and that there's just this common language of faith that you come and everyone is praying the rosary and it in all kinds of languages and uh, but it, it doesn't matter what language you speak and it was beautiful because we got to celebrate Pentecost in uh, when we were in Lourdes and so it's kind of been a perpetual Pentecost as there's been so many languages but we're all kind of understanding one another because we're all here yes we're all here for the same reason sure I think all of them have been absolutely beautiful and I've loved getting to go to each. Uh, yeah, obviously we haven't been in Medjugorje very long yet, but still just the presence of Our Lady um, is here. Like We feel that in our own mother house daily, um, Our Lady protects our community. Uh, we're Marian sisters, so she has a special protection over us. And it, I think the most beautiful thing that I've noticed in each of the places we've been um, is that they've all felt like our home, like our convent. Um, in each place, like there has been a moment where I felt like I am at home, meaning like in our convent. Um, so with our sisters back home, um, as we're here, like we're bringing our sisters from back home with us here on this pilgrimage. Like we're we're all in formation, but there are many other sisters in our community. Um, and so my favorite part of each place has been just like recognizing that um, that atmosphere of peace that is here and Our Lady's protection over our community. More of a similarity of the three, it really hit me this morning as we were hiking or even going to Apparition Hill and seeing all the different places that Mary appeared to, even at different points. We walked along the way in different places on the hill and knowing that she's not limited to time and space she wants to come to us in something beautiful the fact that she has been to lords and medjugorje and fatima and all these places and even in fatima she appeared to the children different places depending on the circumstances and that all she really wants is my heart to be open all she wants is to love me and to be my mother and it doesn't matter where i am it's my disposition and my childlikeness that will allow that to happen even more and so all of that together I mean it just hit me a few hours ago so I have a lot more to digest with it (laughs) yes but very much looking forward to seeing that but then there are also the differences in the age of the children and that but yeah definitely the physical poverty the remoteness and the openness of each of the visionaries and at each of the places, despite the differences of the circumstances what for making each of those criteria. And last question, you all pray the rosary, no? I guess. Yes, yes we do. Yes, every day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what's the beauty for you of the rosary prayer? Mm. I really love the rosary most, I mean, there's many reasons. The primary one is that it is Mary sharing with me the life of her son. It's through her eyes and through her heart that she is walking with me to meet Jesus even more. As just, not only is she my mother-in-law because I'm married to Jesus, but she's also my mother. So like all these different aspects and just like we're looking through photo albums of Jesus' life together. And, but not just looking through it, she wants me to experience Explain that. And what's going mm-hmm. on there now. Yes. And for you, rosary prayer? I love the rosary. Uh, my favorite way to pray the rosary is walking rosaries, of just like holding my rosary um, and going on a walk. And each time I do that, I, I just sense just Mary holding my hand um, and coming and being a mother to me now. Um, in the convent, like we're away from our own physical mothers, right, our biological mothers. Um, but Mary has really like held my hand these first nine months of community life and my whole life whenever I've prayed the rosary. And I enjoy making rosaries because I want to give them to people so that they can have that experience too of just Our Lady holding their hand. Agnostic to uh, yes. <laughs> Tell us the story. Yes, the I. Uh, I I will say I've 
I originally had a hard time praying the rosary, especially during uh, adoration, because I'm like, okay, Jesus is present with us here in a special way in the monstrance, and yet I'm I'm asking for Mary's help to lead me to Jesus, but He's right in front of me. So it was it was a little rocky, but I did I did know before I before I entered the convent, before I was officially Catholic, there were there were a few instances where uh, one time I was I was hiking, and we were in bear territory, and there was had been a bear sighting, and and I immediately just instinctly started praying Hail Marys, and that was so multiple times there had been. Uh, whether out of danger or out of fear or out of something, I immediately just just, just prayed like just continual hair, hail marys, and just as a little kid would like go to their mom for comfort and protection, and so I often now uh, just with my um, I'm a teacher, and so with my schedule, I often pray the rosary in the car, and I often just keep praying, um, even if it's not a whole second rosary, I just kind of keep praying more decades. Um, just for the comfort of more of them, yeah. And for you, Rosary Prayer? Um, I once had a priest tell me that um, when you when you pray the Rosary, you know, if if you pray in a group, like it's like you're you receive the grace from all of those Rosaries. So if all six of us prayed, you know, this Rosary oh. together, then it's like I prayed six Rosaries, you know. And so me at first being selfish, like at first being selfish, I was like, oh sweet, like I always want to pray the Rosary in a group because then you just get so much more. But I think from then on, I've had just such a confidence that for me, like the Rosary. You know, I just know that Mary, as my mother, whether I'm falling asleep as I pray my rosary or I'm having the most intense, beautiful encounter with our Lord while I'm praying my rosary or if I'm distracted or, you know, I only get half said or whatever, whatever it is, I just know that as a mother, like, she's happy to receive that gift. And so I just feel like a great confidence that that she'll take me as I am when I pray the rosary, <laughs> that she Absolutely. will always receive that. And it is my favorite to pray it with other people uh, <laughs> still for that reason, but I just think it's beautiful. Yeah, it's just beautiful to come together in that way. Um, and I just know that she receives that however I am, <laughs> but for better or worse. <laughs> and for you? Um, I often pray the rosary on the way to school. And there's just something that I, I don't know, that I really enjoy about starting my day with the rosary and starting my day with Mary and just like recalling these events in Jesus's life, but also like looking at them with Mary and through Mary and like the virtues that Mary displays and the way that she said yes and her docility and her obedience and just being able to start my day with that and know that like that is the kind of person that I want to be. Um, I would like like to second everything the sisters say, of course, <laughs> but also like how soothing and calming it is. Like I feel like, I mean, we pray the rosary every day. Like that's part of our customs and rules. But like when I am scared of something, when I when I'm mad at Jesus, when I don't know what to say, like the first things I do is say the rosary or say the Hail Marys because it's like the memorized prayer. Um, but even so, on all these pilgrimages, I'm like, what should I get to remember? Like all these beautiful places I've gone to, and when praying with that, I realize the most important way to get to know Mary is through the Rosary. So I've been going each place I've gone to, I've gotten a different Rosary um, to remind me of like the encounters I had there. But also, yeah, just like the best way to get to know Mary is through the Rosary. At the end, what would you tell? What is so beautiful about our Catholic faith? Maybe somebody listen now who is not... Jesus, Jesus. exactly. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Exactly. Totally yeah. scriptural you are. Yeah. <laughs> well, what can I say? Thank you so much for that beautiful interview. Of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you want to greet somebody maybe somewhere? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Hi, Mom and Dad. Nebraska! <laughs> 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 Woo! Woo! Yes. GBR! Go be red! <laughs> <laughs> Our sisters. Hi. <laughs> I hope my family watches this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, bless you. <laughs>